Welcome to the Evil Ted channel. I'm Evil Ted, and this is my first video tutorial, and I'm going to teach you how to foam fabricate a helmet. So, before we start, I'm going to walk you through the entire pattern, uh, every, uh, every process from making pattern making, to transferring to foam, cutting, gluing, and coating, the whole nine yards. So, right now, I'm going to tell you the supplies you need to get before we start. Number one, good old EA floor map foam that you can get at any major retail store. That's that. Also, a trusty head cast, but for you people out there who don't have a head cast, you can also use a um, small motorcycle helmet. Uh, styrofoam head wigs are out there, but they're a bit small. I try to stay with something a little bit about the size of your head. So we got that. Also, good old butcher paper or transfer paper. If you don't have butcher paper, you can still use newspaper. Uh, heavy duty aluminum foil. This is going to come handy like this. Also, duct tape. Solid, you can get cheap stuff, but always you should have duct tape in your house. If you don't have duct tape in your house, you're insane. Got that. Also, Sharpies. I like a medium Sharpie, fine tip Sharpie, and a pencil. And for cutting, I like to use an X-Acto blade and a telescoping mat knife. Got those. And for adhesion, I like to use barge cement. Barge cement is uh, usually sold at leather stores and shoe repair places, but if you cannot get barge cement anywhere in your area, go to any kind of hardware store, and there's a 3M Fast Tack Trim Adhesive, and you get this in pretty much any hardware store, and it's basically the same thing, it's contact adhesive, that too. And, last but not least, you'll need the heat gun. This is gonna come in handy because we're gonna heat and shape and bend foam. So, get these supplies, come back to me, and together, we're gonna make a helmet. All right, now we're going to take our aluminum foil on our head cap. This is what we use to make our pattern. So what I like to do, because since there's a, we have a face open a little bit, I'm going to use this here. Come back here. Go down to the head. Now we have the foil on here. I wrapped it on the front and the back with a little bit of a space here on the side. And once again, you saw my 77, which I apologize for I mentioned before. But this is what I used kind of um, for your sides. You can also use tape, but I do a little 77 on that. Cut this down. Just kind of wrap it. Okay, what to do is now you get the tape, the aluminum foil on both sides, really work in the detail. Rub that sucker and get it nice and smooth so you get a true contour of your whole head. Okay, now. <clears throat> This is what we use to make our pattern, but this foil is very fragile. So we want to make sure to keep this all in place. What is where the, this is where the duct tape comes in handy. So we're going to cover the aluminum foil with the duct tape. What you do is you're going to cover the whole head, all the foil that's exposed, covered with duct tape. But the trick is when you're doing duct tape, don't let it build up on itself. Try to keep it as flat as possible. So what you can do, you keep Make sure the duct tape stays nice and flat. All right, now we're going to make our cut lines. So making a pattern, it's just like fabric and clothing. When people dart and make patterns, you have no worth where to cut. So being this is going to be made out of foam, you got to find where your lines are going to be. So right now, being as a helmet, I'm going to kind of just do a uh, generic over the face here because I want to find my center line because that's going to be the center. So what I do is I kind of draw like so. I dub this <laughs> the center of the head. And I'm going to dub this the center back in the head here. So what I'm going to do is I want to bring these guys over to each other. Kind of do a little bit of a straight edge on this. I'm going to kind of line these guys up like so. I'm going to follow the crest of this head because we know that you know, the foam won't bend this far. So you have to kind of figure out. So it'll go this far, but it won't go this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try meet that halfway point. So I'm going to estimate, as I like to say, guesstimate. Oh, this is going to go like here. So. And you can kind of see the crest comes back here. I'm going to stay 
I always try to stay on the highest point. You can see where this head's kind of peaking, where it curves. That's what you want to do. The, you want to try to do the line on the center of the curve. Come back down. So now that we have that line, I like to use these sometimes. This comes, you can get these at uh, mostly at any fabric stores. But uh, let's say two and a quarter. So let's do two and a quarter here. Move from up above. Three inches here. So over here, three inches. And what I'm doing is I'm making little dots. See the dots here? And we're just going to line them up. Since I know it's going to be a face, I'm going to have it open like so, bring it down, kind of come down to the jawline. And let's end it right here. Now I got this go on the jawline here, like so. And this depends where you want the helmet to cut off. I like to cut off just below the ears. Okay, now that we have our major cut lines all done in, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a hash marks, so lineup marks, because I do them every, um, I say about two and a half inches. I kind of eyeball this. What this is, these are going to be lineup marks, because when you cut this all apart, you want to make sure this all comes back together exactly as you cut it. So what you do is you make these little marks right here. These are going to be your register marks. Very important in the foam fabric in your world, especially with making something like a helmet. Because we're going to be bending this foam and stretching it, and you want to make sure this all goes back together. All right, now we have our lines on here, our hash marks, we're ready to go. I have my trusty X Acto blade. And uh, you just go ahead and cut along the lines. Our pattern is cut. All right, now that we have our aluminum foil patterns done, I'm going to lay them down. Come up, I'll show you. This, we need to make it lay flat. There'll be a slight curve that's going to fight you, but since it's aluminum foil and duct tape, it's going to work it out, make it flat, like so. Which also I forgot to mention too. When you're done, there's a put an F for a front and a B for a back. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but when you're pattern making, sometimes you'll ask yourself, is this the front or is this the back? So, and the reason I say that because it happens to me a lot. Now, here's the side piece, and it's got a pucker. See, it's not laying flat, so I need to dart that. So I'm thinking, let's see if we can cut that right. Let's do it right here. Cut this straight out. See? That opens it up, and now it's allowed to lay flat. Now, these little hash marks I made, we need to transfer these over. So what do you do? It's like take an X-Acto blade on both sides and do a little arrow here, here, see? And I do it as the same thickness as the Sharpie line. So I go from here, there, see? Now, for our brown paper, as I like to call it butcher paper or wrapping paper, come on up. Since we're going to make this helmet, what we're going to do is that we made two sides. We made a right, right and a left. But since it's a helmet, I want it to be symmetrical. We're going to pick one side and make this be uh, our, our hero side. So I'm picking the left because I like it. Because they're basically, if you look at them, really, they're roughly about the same size. So if you look closely, what I've done right here, as you can see, I have my, uh, my pattern. All my darts are cut. It's all laid out nice and flat. And now I'm going to take my fine tip sharpie. And all right, we got this all done. I'm going to take this off. As you can see, now we have our side piece and our top curve piece. And what I'm going to do, like I said, you have your front and your back. And once again, transfer that to your paper pattern. Front and back. And this here is your side. Side, 
and um, this can be both you know right and left. This right here, I believe we did the uh, this thing. Left, and then you flip over. Left, and when you flip it over, you're right on the other side. So now, I want to cut these guys out. What I like to do when I cut an exacto blade, you might see some deviations and stuff in your lines. That won't be a difference because now you can really clean things up with your pattern. So here we go. Now, these pigments, cut me. Make sure you get your darts out. Once again, very crucial. You get these guys. All right. Now we're going to transfer our paper patterns onto foam. Key. Number thing to do when you're doing this, I always like to use push pins. So when you're transferring your pattern onto your foam, you don't want to move around on you. So I like to use take a push pins. All right. What I like doing too, get this pin down. I like to uh, so we don't waste so much foam. Get as close as possible. Want some? Maybe on that. Like I said, get these guys first. Okay, now that we have our left done, I'm gonna flip over and make this my right. So now this is the right side. Label this. All right, and once again, front and back. And again, just to maximize the space, kind of put them relatively close together. All right, have them all transferred onto the uh, the foam. And uh, being, I want the uh, the smooth side because you can do the texture sides if you choose. But on this particular helmet, I want to do. I want to keep it smooth, so I'm keeping the rough side and the side. As you can see, I got my right. I'm sorry, my left and my right. My patterns are flipped, labeled front and back. Because once you're putting this together, trust me, it comes in handy to label them. Matter of fact, let me label this guy right, so I don't forget. Now, cutting foam. Oh, by the way, as you're asking about this sharpener, uh, if you look below the, uh, the YouTube, I'll send you a link to this. We can get these. All right, now that we have our pieces cut out, what we do, when cutting your lines for foam, you want to keep them 90 degrees. Because when you're cutting, sometimes your blade will tend to waver, you'll get kind of like bevels and whatnot. That's going to make it really difficult on your shape. It's going to change the way the pieces go together. So when you're cutting, make sure you keep it nice and square. And I do is keep your hands straight. But when I'm cutting, so this is a straight edge. And your sharpie mark, if you look closely, don't cut on this side. You want to cut on the inside because you realize where the sharpie ends, this is where the paper pattern starts and ends. So when you're cutting, cut on the inside sharpie line. And I can use the straight edge, keep it nice and square. See, and when you cut, nice 90 degree angle. For really crazy curves like this, I like to use the band saw. For you people out there who don't have a band saw, you can definitely cut all your pieces with your knife. But when you do it, when you're cutting, make sure you keep your hands square. For example, here we go. Take my trusty sharpener. the excess in when cutting I have a good cutting board let the, the blade touch the table and keep it nice and square and just kind of go like so all your sharpie lines and you see it turning and there you go there you go. nice and square and if you have a band saw it's actually a lot easier to use so you don't have to use a bandsaw, you have to, the man but I like to use the bandsaw because I can just do it a lot quicker and get my edges clean. So, with that being said, okay, I have all the pieces now cut. And this is the, uh, the really dense floor mat foam. Now, making stuff out of L200, just the straight foam, it's very soft, and you probably won't need to do this because it's so soft, it'll take its shape. But uh, being this stuff is really dense, which sometimes becomes a, a benefit. What I like to do though, before I start gluing these guys together, I'll put a little curve into them by using our trusty heat gun. And what I like to do is I want to uh, heat the, both sides. And then take it like so, and I kind of take my fingers, and when I bend it, I kind of pull a little bit. Kind of put it. 
a little bit of a curve into it. Like so. I can like palm it, pull it between them. Yeah, the more I'm looking at this, I like I like this curve here and this here, and I was realizing I'm curving these guys. This is still relatively, if you look, it's still pretty flat. And being there's an ear gonna go in there, I realized I might want to shape that up. So what I like to do for that, and use my knee, like an anvil, <laughs> just kind of hold it and rock it around my knee. See, now, much more of a curve, so you'll know you have some clearance for your ears, okay? So once we get this all glued together too, you can definitely do some, you can do a little more tweaking with pinion, all right? Okay, this is my favorite part. This is where we start gluing and putting these together, and you really start to see it come together. So now, do some gluing once again. We have barge, the fast track adhesive, you know this is a glue pot. Uh, I put my barge cement in a glue pot. You can get these at McMaster Car for like $30. Um, they're great because what it is that you can put your glue in there and put it in and re dip and you'll get it on your hands. So right now, what we're going to do, we're going to start gluing so with the barge. This is contact adhesive. This goes for anything. You do a series of thin coats. What I like to do is do one thin coat. Both sides. Since I got the glue in there, I kind of squeeze these guys together and rub it. Oh yeah, did I mention you should get rubber gloves? <laughs> uh, but that's not necessary, but it's always good to have. All right. So I can do stuff like this. Wipe off the excess. Okay. And now, since we have this, we're going to start doing the edges now. And you can put um, one heavy coat. I like to do a series of two thin coats. Just one thin coat. Because foam has a tendency to soak up the glue. Uh, the floor mat foam is a lot denser, so that's usually not an issue. But like upholstery foam, L200, I always find it's very absorbent. So I always like to put on two coats. Now for the fun part. Let's put this bad boy together. Here we go. Okay. What we're going to do now, this is uh, top pieces. And this is where you can... With the hash lines will really come in handy. Line it up like so. All right, nice and square. Press, and see this is where your little marks line. And what you do is you go, and you push, because, stick, see, no, rip, same thing. And then, you line your marks up. And this is where they come in handy. See? East. Yep, there you go, see? That's our first part, top of the helmet. This guy, have a little dart. Put in like so, lined up. Here we go. Line it up. Push. Okay, like so. Pull it, get it, and flush like here. Here we go. Line them up. Line it up once again. Got to push. Line that mark up. And almost there. Got it. See, once again, can't praise enough about your hash marks. <laughs> Especially the number one rule of pattern making. Line these guys right back up. Okay. Also, too, you can heat these guys up, maybe curve these in more, and add pieces to them. But uh, the sky's the limit. You can do what you do with it. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is make some additional pieces to stick on this. To jazz it up a little bit. So let's do that. Hello, everybody. That concludes part one on how to make a helmet. Now, this is my first tutorial. It's run a little long, so to break it into three parts. So subscribe and come back for part two and three on how to make a helmet. Also, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Evil Ted40. You can contact me on e uh, Evil Ted49 at gmail.com. Go to my uh, Facebook at EvilTedSmith.com and uh, contact me there. But please subscribe and catch you guys back for part two on how to make a helmet.